Welcome to Ham Radio QRP. Today we do a little something different. We take a look at a power supply for an old Heathkit HW101. I've had a growing interest in tube radios for some time now. I started the hobby only a few years ago and that was many many years after tube radios were in common use by amateur operators. And I just would like to have a chance to learn how to repair them, operate them, and see what it was like for amateur operators back in the day as they um, both operated CW and voice. This radio in particular has a CW filter, not a very good one, and there are numerous issues with using CW on a Heath kit, although there are some modifications that make it easier and I plan to make those modifications. But before I can begin to restore the radio and make the modifications, I have to be able to power it. And powering an old tube radio requires a high voltage source. There are, are a couple different power supplies that were made for Heathkit radios. And not knowing any better, I decided I wanted to run mine from the 12 volt source in case I wanted to operate mobile at some point. Well, operating from a 12 volt source requires a power supply that can transform 12 volts up into the high voltages required for tube radios. Heathkit made a power supply called an HP13 that used a toroidal transformer driven much like an old vibrator power supply from uh, the 40s and 50s. I decided to restore one and we'll take a brief look at what I did. One of the biggest problems restoring older equipment, particularly power supplies, is that the parts have aged and oftentimes go bad. Electrolytic capacitors in particular will go bad over time and can become dangerous to leave in circuit because they can short circuit the equipment. Additionally, carbon resistors can change value over time. They can increase in value particularly. So I had to check the values of all of the carbon resistors and any that were more than 20% off I replaced as well as replacing all the electrolytics and in a power supply there are a lot of electrolytic capacitors to replace. When you're replacing old parts with newer parts you'll find that the newer components are far smaller than the older. Here you can see that the electrolytic capacitors that are replacing the old ones are taking up far less space and new electrolytics generally are radial rather than axial, meaning their leads are coming out of the bottom. So when they're replaced on the board, it requires a bit of creativity to make them, uh, to wire them up. In the same way, modern film resistors are smaller than their old carbon versions. Here you'll see a replacement 2 watt 100K resistor. It's far smaller than 100K carbon resistor next to it, but the one it replaced had uh, exceeded its value significantly. Older equipment oftentimes had tangles of wiring where components were simply soldered to other components. Here you can see a much smaller electrolytic capacitor replacing an older orange one, the older one being on the left, and you have to be a bit creative and make sure you've insulated leads coming off of the new smaller components so that it doesn't interfere with the wiring of the older system. So here's the HP 13 with the electrolytics replaced and other bad components replaced. Let's take a look and see how it does. All right, here's a HP 13 mobile power supply being powered by normal 12 volt supply. Um, now this required the radio to switch 12 volts into it to turn it on. I'm using this power supply to switch the uh, 12 volts here to turn the relay on inside. And boy, this thing makes some racket. All right. I want to caution you if you're wearing headphones that you may want to turn down the volume before proceeding. This power supply makes a lot of uh, high-pitched noise and it can be painful to listen to. Racket. All right, let's turn it on. That wine is um, 
the transformer going in and out of saturation. That's the way it's designed. Each of the um, transistors on either side drives it in and out of saturation for the high and the low voltage. Now I can get my low voltage reading here. Here's my low voltage reading over here. My low voltage reading is reading 244, so I think I've got the wrong tap set inside because this thing is designed to be tapped either at 250 volts or 300 for the low voltage. Uh, so I need to look into that. My bias is coming out right at one minus 130, and that's what it should be. The high voltage shows zero volts, and that's because my ohm meter only goes up to uh, 600 volts and it's got a protection circuit that doesn't allow me to show. So I have run it up uh, past by lowering the input voltage run it up to 600 volts and then past and then the multimeter shuts off. Um, so I need to check on my 300 to 250 volt difference inside there and figure out some way to damp the squeal out of this because I don't think I could I can't sit with it at the operating position like this. I believe that in the past uh, mobile users would put this in the in the uh, firewall section of the car or under their seat and surround it by padding. It can't. It needs airflow, so because uh, it's got to cool these these heat sinks on either side. So I can't uh, can't really put it in a box. Um, but anyway. Restoring the old power supply seems to have worked other than uh, this 250 to 300 volt difference. I'm going to debug that next. Alright, shut it off.